Today, uh, I want to go through just a little bit on the first reading, because one of the things we have in the first reading is Philip going to Samaria, and in Samaria, he finds great success in preaching Jesus to the Samaritans. One of the things about the apostles is that the apostles were given a mandate um, by the Lord prior to his ascension to go out into all the world, and yet they're there in Jerusalem. Now, they're certainly making great strides. They're certainly bringing many people uh, to Jerusalem, to the, to the way of life. They're certainly uh, preaching Jesus. They're certainly doing all those things, and they're added in great numbers. But it's not a matter of having the people come to them, like the temple in Jerusalem from all over the empire. They're told to go out. And so sometimes, even though nobody wants a persecution, nobody desires of persecution, they needed, in a way, a push uh, to go out into the world. And the persecution resulting from the uh, martyrdom of St. Stephen did that. And so Philip went out to the Samaritans. <coughs> in the gospel, what we have is we have the Lord Jesus again at the Last Supper. Uh, this is the essentials. He's telling the apostles the essentials, what they need to know. Um, because his time on earth will be very short. This is last night before his passion and death. So he's talking to them and he's giving them the instructions that they need. And so one of the things about it that he says is that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And one of the things about that is that we kind of want to go away from two things. One is we kind of want to go from away from the wagging finger. You know, if you love me, then you'll do it, you know, or the or the person, you know, if you love me, you'll, you know, you know, the guilt trip or the, uh, or the, you know, I'm taking notes uh, as to all the times that you somehow didn't do this. Um, but again, we want to keep that in mind, but we also want to keep in mind the fact that we can't do well, you know, I just love Jesus, but I'm, Jesus understands and I can do anything that I want and that's okay because, you know, he, he'll he understand. Um, so what we want to do is find that territory of uh, that balance. And so one of the things, the words uh, in Greek in that letter in saying and keeping can also be treasuring or to hold dear. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to understand that sometimes we may screw up, sometimes we may mess up, we have a fallen human nature, so we're not going to follow the commandments perfectly all the time, but the one we want to do is that when we do find ourselves falling short of the glory of God to come to confession and to confess our sins and bring us back into a relationship with God. So we certainly see the seriousness of the commandments, we certainly see the need to follow the commandments, and we certainly understand that it is in following the commandments that we'll have the best chance of happiness in this life and eternal happiness in the life to come. Uh, and so that is that. The other thing that he says is that he says that he's not going to leave them orphans. So in a way, talking about the Holy Spirit, and one of the things about the Spirit of God is that the Spirit of God uh, gives us many gifts, and one is to remind us of the words of Jesus, uh, to remind us of his words. The words of Jesus have power. They're not just like some reading something on the internet or something on a magazine or a newspaper, that they have actual power uh, to change and transform our life. The other thing is that it convicts us of sin. Uh, when we think that where everything is fine and where everything is no problem, um, all of a sudden we have this, this feeling that we've done you know, that we shouldn't be doing that, what we're doing. And so the Lord uh, convicting us of sin. Um, the other thing is teaching us to pray. Um, there's a priest, Father Francis Martin, who is a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington who passed a few years ago. He always said, if you don't know how to pray, ask the Lord and he'll show you how to pray. Uh, he'll lead you into having to pray. And so one of the things about it is having to pray. So we think about the gifts of this Holy Spirit, but there are also many other things that the Spirit of God does in our life. And then lastly, it talks about that he who observes the commandments will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. And so that fellowship that we have with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that mystical fellowship that we have with God, 
um, allowing us to come into a relationship with God, um, that follow keeping the commandments, loving God and loving our neighbor, and bringing us into a relationship with God, um, not only in this life, but in the life to come. So again, what we think about with this particular gospel um, and all the three um, uh, chapters in the Gospel of John, 14, uh, well, four chapters, 14, 14 15, 16, and 17, uh, really provide that instructions to the apostles and really instructions for us of what is those essential parts of, of Christian life that we should know. Uh, thanks and God bless and happy Mother's Day.